to invite Dr. D. Franklin Masikaran, sir, Assistant Professor, Department of English, Bishop Appasami College. He is specialized in English language teaching and he is an examiner in BEC KET, KET CAE. He has published papers in national and international conferences and he is producing four PhD and one MPhil candidates. He has organized awareness programs, seminars on various topics, literary competitions and youth carnival. He was a resource person in many colleges. He has attended numerous seminars, conferences and workshops. He acted as a judge for various literary competitions. Sir, may I now request you to proceed the session? Okay, thank you for the kind words, uh, ma'am. Um, it's it is really a, a privilege and a pleasure to be uh, with the eminent scholars and also the veteran teachers of English and also the presenters of uh, uh, today. So I feel honored and privileged to be uh, with you all. Okay, now uh, the presenters, uh, one, yes, you can present your uh, uh, papers. And uh, so all the listeners, our attenders, in the, part, for the participants, Yes, so we can enjoy the session. Have a great day. Thank you. Yeah, good afternoon. Yes, good afternoon. I'm Hassan. Um, I'm the PhD scholar in management. I'd like to uh, present my uh, topic, positive in management uh, marketing strategy of banking towards small and medium enterprises, that is SMEs. Uh, can I go ahead with that, sir? Hello. Um, yes, sir. Yes, sir. But but oh. uh, you can be a little bit louder, so I don't okay. know if uh, it's audible for all. Yes, thank okay. you. Yes, you can go ahead. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. I'll just adjust my audio. I think I I could hear everybody. I think so. Hello. Yes, sir. Yes, yes. Please proceed. Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, good afternoon. One more time, Mr. Frank, uh, Franklin, sir, who is uh, who's been as a chairman. It's been very honor and privilege to me to present in front of everybody, and uh, Dr. Madam Maha, and then all the research scholars and professors. I thank you very much for the opportunity that you are given to me to present in front of you all. And then my topic is going on SMEs. Um, they have been um, uh, lack to get the marketing strategy from the bankers, and uh, I just choose uh, this is for the voice for voiceless. And um, uh, even the government in um, uh, in any any country, uh, they have been giving a variety of programs to assist the small and medium enterprises. Even though even though they are given this, but this uh, this has been not reachable to the uh, uh, small players. And if you see uh, SMEs, um, they are the heterogeneous group, and they can they could be in every areas like handicraft and small machines and restaurants and computer software because, and the World Bank has given the definition that uh, the, the 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 organization which is having ten employees they would be micro, and those who are having the fifty and they they are considering as a small uh, with a turnover of uh, three million. Um, not three million asset sales, and uh, that's the income revenue. And the medium is three hundred uh, employees. So this is the um, criteria the World Bank has given for the SMEs. And uh, if we go with the bankers, um, so uh, bankers uh, always looking for the uh, volume um, because um, I have little experience in this. So with my experience, I would like to give where they have been lacking in that areas. Um, the competition in the banking sector, because it's been limited, uh, bankers have not been un under pressure to develop their lending to small clients like SMEs. This is a major thing. Uh, they have been uh, not intended to go towards SMEs. Um, though uh, the SMEs are being more profitable to the countries as well as uh, in the economy and, uh, and each and every one. Because um, uh, I do remember 2007 when the recession hit it, um, the, the the major major countries i mean even us and even um, the uh, dubai the, the most of the areas 
and they've been affected much but when we see uh, the india um, it's been occupied with most of uh, uh, smes uh, they haven't even felt the recession what it has been uh, this is what i could realized even 2009 i uh, i may not feel that uh, time period uh, but the overall overall uh, areas it is just like you know uh, uh, i mean uh, i could say is uh, financial uh, tsunami uh, that's how it's been affected that construction have been stopped and uh, funding and uh, so many things have been uh, i mean struggled over the recession but when the smes uh, or uh, wherever the market is being occupied by the smes uh, th- they couldn't feel uh, the recession at all i could say so and then um, in, in in terms of smes if we see in the in the view of smes uh, smes often complain that their growth and competitors are constrained by a lack of access to financing the, because of the high cost of credit uh, smaller firms in developing countries also reported that they have to bribe uh, they have to bribe Uh, to the large firms to get i mean uh, uh, to get the financing this is a, it's a main problem and, uh, and uh, i i could go through some uh, literature and then you know i could realize uh, uh, they have done a, a very good survey in 1980 with the marketing executives of 40 41 ages in the branch level across the four associate banks concluded the bank have failed to adopt their marketing orientations i mean uh, this bankers were specifically find lacking of eight areas um, uh, that i could say so and uh, they were mainly uh, uh, they are act- they are their main thing is that uh, lending deposit taking and money transmission rather than the customer wants like it means what they want they are not looking after that and then service being produced as they have been since uh, instigation with no analysis changing customer needs you know that's the thing is a major part of the uh major made a part, major part of the findings and organizational structures when we see that career bank recruitment policies and the focus on internal relationships indicated the internal company orientation rather than the external customer one and then the, the fourth point what they are emphasizing and uh, the sellers needs rather than the buyers as was evidenced by their advertising efforts to increase deposits during then inflammatory period in that order to increase their resource base and then uh, the, the uh, very good uh, very good uh, thing is the pricing policies the little evidence of profit planning in their pricing policies and the sixth point short term orientation was apparent in the uh, poor communication of the banks corporate plans to branch managers and the subordinate role of marketing planning and uh, um, uh, they could they could come up with another two points that uh, there was no sophisticated market segmentation strategy and uh, this is this is another main part because Uh, bankers they don't have to look after the segmentation uh, because uh, as i said in the uh, beginning they've been looking for only volume uh, um, based on the large firms and uh, b- because of all this they don't have the marketing planning system was been implemented rightly so what i could suggest from my um, initial study uh, the marketing strategy it has to be uh, um it has to be in a way of uh, segmentation and the current need of the smes uh, so what is the uh, what is the adoption of marketing strategy the banks and financial institution could take that so uh, the banks have to have uh, they um, uh, they have raised the questions towards smes that four questions i could find out um, what is, the first one is how can banks better understand sme customer needs and then second point i could uh, mention that how can they match diverse needs with the right of uh, service level and delivery channel and then um, third one is uh, how can bank effectively manage sme customers across their life cycle throughout their life, life cycle because you know the two uh, the initial in, initial in, investment from the period to 2 to 3 years um, they have to stand in the market with the financing uh, need uh, needs always always so this through throughout their life cycle the banks, banks have to be helpful to them and the fourth question is the sme is customer management along with the customer life cycle it has to be on the place these all the things uh, will make them to go towards the market segmentation the market market segmentation is nothing but you know identifying sub markets within the to- total market is a market segmentation within um, i mean if i if i don't have to go to more elaborate in this area it's a huge area market segmentation i just have to say it in a line that you know 
uh, within the total market, we need to go with the sub-market. That's the market segmentation. And then in process of the segmentation, management risk has to be identified characteristics of customer, which will cause them to respond favorably to the company company's product and services. Um, so in this case, the traditional segmentation basis for the corporate banking market have been location, industry type, and company size, or some combination of these things. Uh, these are the things they need to uh, find out. And uh, the next, then the ma next major thing they you know, what they can do is the strategic planning initiatives. Uh, in this initiatives, um, you know, we 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 could we could see the current era how the market has been changed. You know, everything has gone through the. Uh, digital uh, marketing um, strategies you know uh, most of the people um, and most of the companies and everybody after the co uh, corona covid period uh, everybody is looking for the uh, online services or social media in this in this way so uh, the mac or the the bankers uh, even they have to uh, liberalize their uh, way to go through the channels of um, digital marketing uh, in this area they can they can adopt the social media or blogs or websites that's how they can do that um, you know social medias as far as you know facebook um, instagram twitter these areas and all you know uh, even the uh, even every area it's been popularized and then the people are accessing even the uh, i could say that i mean uh, not not well uh, you know familiarized people even they are using the facebook and all the all the things so banks can uh, or could they could adopt in this ways so with this all you know i could just conclude uh, with a um, couple of points that you know bankers what they can do uh, to achieve this SMEs market and uh, i can conclude with a couple of points that you know bankers can um, reduce the capital adequacy, which is they are, they've been uh, looking for the uh, normal corporates, and they can they can they can go with the, even the smaller um, you know capitals. For example, you know if they are going for the financing, uh, they always look for them certain capital for uh, I mean two hundred thousand or hundred thousand. Um, for the SMEs when they are starting up, they couldn't go with this kind of uh, deposits, so. Um, then uh, the next point, then they can what they can do that the law owning and the enforcement of contract and uh, collaterals, uh, they could they could reduce it with the movable assets and collaterals. And the third one, uh, developing the policy and legal and regulatory frameworks that are essential to the development of innovative financial institution and instruments, including venture capital and small and equity investments and the leasing. And the fourth point of what I can do, promoting innovation in specialized lending technology that reduce the administration cost associated with credit application, monitoring, and payment. And these things, you know, they have to reduce it. And uh, and the, the last point is that I, what I can say that within the capacity of financial institution to evaluate, SME credit worthiness is a cost-effective manner, for example, through the use of credit scoring techniques. Instead of they could go the uh, traditional way, they can go with other credit score techniques if the customer uh, it's been eligible through that, you know, they can reduce the uh, paperwork and they can go ahead with their um, um, needs and they can they can serve them a better way. Uh, this is how I can conclude. I hope I get something from me. Uh, thank you for allowing me to present this. Uh, if there's any question that I can address you. Hello? Hello, sir? Um, yes, uh, Mr. Harshan. So it was yes, a very sir. good uh, yeah, presentation. Uh, you uh, made it uh, clear how you, uh, the SME, right, and uh, small and uh, uh, medium scale, uh, right, enterprises. Are, yes, sir. So they are not uh, given much opportunity or uh, by the banks and also there is a, like the strategy plans also it is very low. Yes, we are talking about yes, that. Sir. Yes, sir. Yes, um, sir. Okay, uh, participants. Any any questions you can uh, or clarifications you can uh, you can ask. Yes, the the forum is open. Yes. Uh, 
Oh, okay. Um, Thank you, sir. Uh, now, uh, Harshan, I I'm just curious yes, about uh, the topic and also, right, uh, since it is not uh, uh, coming out of literature, it is not a problem. Uh, so okay. they, the market, the banks, right? So the banks that are okay. giving loans, right? So they are not uh, focusing much on this small and medium enterprises, that? Yes, sir. Uh, okay, okay. So uh, do you do you think that uh, uh, it will affect the Indian economy at large? And uh, definitely, yeah, yeah, definitely, there is no doubt about that, sir. That's what I told you with my experience. Hmm. And uh, I got a chance to work in Dubai uh, while 2007 to 2010, and 2009 the recession hit it there very heavily. And I could see the buildings are stopping in the middle when the construction, I mean, construction are stopping in the middle. And, you know, you know, literally you could see the traffic has gone out. And, you know, for, for example, if I go to my uh, office, it may take, I mean, 45 minutes time um, before the recession. After the recession, 15 minutes time, I could go that because of the traffic, less traffic, because the uh, market has been down that much. We could see it in our literal eyes. But when I come back to India, you know, India that time, it was been, uh, that market has been uh, packed by, I mean, SMEs. Um, I'm basically, I'm from Kanyakumari. You know, they, they, they are not aware about anything. As usual, the normal life has been going on. I just wondered about it. You know, the difference, I could see that. And then I realized how far the SMEs are very important to our economy. Sir. That's, a, I mean, real-time example I'm just giving to you. Yeah, thank you. So, uh, what uh, popular economists? So they are talking about this, right? Uh, so we yes. may, so we may get, uh, we may not get the products directly from the uh, companies, corporate companies of other countries. So where okay. we can, we can produce, right? We can use the formula exactly. of others. Yeah, we can use the formula of others, and we can mm. produce ourselves. So that yes, sir. Yes, sir. Our, our raw material, our production, our employment will increase and yeah. yes, definitely it will lead to uh, the profit in our uh, own uh, Tamil Nadu or in India at large, right? So that is what yes, the people are talking about and uh, the government yes, also should come forward to do uh, all these things. So you have given some recommendations also. So that is yes, good. Sir. So we have to right, think uh, right globally and act uh, uh, locally so that is what so i, I locally in the sense uh, we need to uplift our own uh, right the small scale industries and the medium scale industry uh, people so then you yes, can sir. see uh, right, yeah 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 grown up uh, uh, india uh, yes village is the backbone of our uh, country so no doubt about uh, that yes yes sir that's right yes yes sir yes, that's yes. right sir yes sir good, that's good. Right. Yes. so yes. thank you uh, you have uh, uh, done well Yes. So, yeah. any any other clarifications or questions you can ask, uh, Mr. Harshan Tambi? Yes. Yes, sir. Okay, uh, ma'am, over to ma'am. Sir. Okay, thank, yes, yes, thank you so yes, much, sir. Sir, thank you can you. proceed with the next presenter, sir. Okay, okay. Thank you, ma'am, thank you. Yes, sir. Next presenter is Rajini. Yes. Ah, yes, ma'am. Yes. Okay. Um, uh, good afternoon, uh, Rajini. Good afternoon, so you, sir. You are, you are doing uh, your PhD in English, right? In Jaina University, Bangalore, right? Yes, good, sir. Good. Exactly. Okay. Okay. So, Rajini, uh, congratulations, and you can start your presentation. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Good evening, everyone. I am Rajini. I am a research scholar from Jain University, Bangalore. And uh, today's paper presentation would be on the topic reflection of the marginalized voices in SL Bhairapas Parva. Uh, I sincerely apologize the background noise here. There's a lot of 
construction work going on. Bangalore is developing so much that there is a lot of construction work. So I sincerely apologize for that. Uh, I hope it doesn't disturb you people. Um, Parva is a novel uh, written by S.L. Bhairapa. And uh, it talks about war, peace, love, death, God, and man. S.L. Bhairapa is a renowned Kannada writer. Uh, he was awarded the Padma Shri Award on, on January 26, 2023. Uh, he is renowned for various writings, and um, he has written around 47, 48 novels. All of them are very popular, and he has been widely translated. Uh, Parva it was originally written in Kannada uh, in the year 1979. So we can think about its, uh, you know, its growth over these years, over these uh, 40, 45 years. So it is an interpretation. It is a revisionist interpretation of Mahabharata. It talks about various characters, their uh, emotions, and their perception about the war, about the preparation of the war, and the consequence of the war. Uh, today, I'll be just talking about the marginalized characters in S.L. Bhairapa's Parva. There are a lot of uh, uh, characters that have been uh, marginalized in uh, Parva, and uh, uh, out of which I'm just selecting a few of them. So uh, to give an introduction to that, I can uh, very clearly say that marginalization, it's not a concept of the modern theory or the pre-modern theory. Uh, it has been here uh, since ages. So uh, the caste system, the Varna system, uh, as it, it, it dates back to human civilization. As soon as human civilization was made and there was some kind of uh, culture and civilization that took place uh, and the categories were made in human society, the Varna system was created. And uh, this, this, whether we want it or, or not, we don't want it. Uh, there was a category of people who was who were considered only for a particular uh, kind of work. So marginalization has started from that. And uh, it means treatment of a person or a group or, you know, it is a concept of, uh, you know, as something insignificant. And it is pushed to the peripheral of the human society. Marginalization, it can be in the name of gender, color or caste or even in the kind of birth. So. My focus will be on the kind of birth that has taken place in Mahabharata, whether they are legitimate children or illegitimate children. Some of them, even though they were illegitimate children, they were brought into limelight and they were uh, idolized. They were given a lot of prominence, but some of them remained in the periphery. They, they were just ignored. They were not at all considered as children. So the characters that I have chosen are a mixture of all these things. Uh, the two Indian uh, epics, they consist of a lot of marginalized characters. And my paper here, it just gives a very quick, a quick look at uh, marginalized characters in uh, Parva. Okay, one sec. Once again, um, I'll just go on to the next one. Uh, once again, I'll just stop sharing for a while and then uh, come back again. Okay, uh, so in, Marjan, I mean, in Mahabharata, uh, there are a lot of characters and incidents that make these uh, characters, there are, they, they make these characters as marginalized. So uh, James Fitzgerald, he says that Mahabharata, it is not just an epic, it is not just a novel, it is not just a piece of uh, work. It talks about uh, kings and queens and uh, brothers and cousins and war and all those things. But it is a uh, study of uh, women and the Sutras. We understand that there are a lot of Sutras, there are a lot of Sutas 
um, that who came into limelight at that time. Uh, any child who was born to a person, uh, especially a male from the royal family to a dasi or a maid servant, uh, was considered as a suta. So there, there were a lot of them, lots and lots of them. And there were a lot of illegitimate children also. So uh, Mahabharata can be the Veda of women and sudras. That is what Fitzgerald he thought, thinks about that. Uh, Post-colonial literary texts, they talk about uh, various uh, perceptions and analy analysis of marginalization and empowerment as uh, illustrated in ancient Indian society. Uh, those people who were empowered, but still they were marginalized. They were not considered, they were not brought into limelight at all. That uh, the, the, There are many texts that talk about this kind of um, treatment towards the characters. So out of them, I've just tried to mention two of them, the Mahabharata, complete Adi Parva, and the narrative art in Mahabharata, they mainly focus on this kind of perceptions. Um, when we talk about the marginalization, there is a lot of highlight on the dilemma and the oppression faced by these um, deprived groups. Dilemma is uh, when they come to, you know, when they are asked for help, when they have to actually show their loyalty either to the king or the queen or to their own community or uh, when they have to think about what is just and what is unjust they have a lot of dilemma so there there is a, uh, an explanation of dilemma and the oppression also faced by these groups uh, to name a few characters there are there is vyasa uh, himself an illegitimate child, child to uh, queen satyavati that is Vidura. Uh, we have uh, another character called Yutsu. Uh, we have Ekalavya, very well known of late, and Ghatotkaja. And even Satyavati, all these characters, they leave a very strong impact on the readers um, because they are biased, they are um, oppressed, they are marginalized uh, because of their uh, low caste birth. And the Aryans of that period, they treated them very badly. Uh, moving on to the characters, I'll be just talking about four characters in my paper. That is Vidura, Ekalavya, Yuyutsu, and Ghatotkaja. Uh, my first character is Vidura. Uh, uh, he was a scholar. He was an excellent administrator. And we all have understood that without Vidura's uh, consent, without his counseling, without his advice, King Dhritarashtra could not do anything. So it was he who actually ruled. Uh, the uh, Hastinavati, he all, he gave a lot of administrative tips to uh, King Dhritarashtra. And not just that, Dhritarashtra totally, entirely depended on Vidura uh, for everything, almost everything. He was his best friend. He was his punching bag. He used to throw out his anger on Vidura, everything. So he, we understand that Vidura is an embodiment of intellect. He voice. Uh, metaphors the voice of wisdom and logical reasoning so he just you know he is very silent his this character is uh, made in such a way that he speaks very less and only when required he is not a person who just goes on giving giving advices he talks only when it is necessary he is less spoken character but whatever he speaks makes a lot of sense and there is reasoning in it uh, he is the half brother of uh, the Tarashtra and pandu uh, he, and he was raised and educated by Bhishma. Bhishma adored Vidura very much. Uh, Pandu was one a character who just uh, goes away from uh, Hastinavati at a very early age because of various reasons, which I would not be talking about in this paper. So, uh, and Dhritarashtra was there. So, uh, Bhishma, uh, you know, if at all he wanted to discuss any kind of administrative matter, he would always depend on Vidura. And uh, he, he just adored him for that. So he was cons consulted for any kind of administrative uh, purposes. Uh, though Vidura was very intelligent and he was a scholarly administrator, he was very well versed in the uh, form of administration. He could not become the king uh, because neither of his parents belonged to the royal blood. So he was born to a dasi or a maid servant, and his father. Uh, was uh, Veda Vyasa uh, himself, or also called as Krishna Dvaipayana himself. 
so both of them did not belong to the royal blood so though he had all the qualities of becoming king vidura could not become the king uh, and very unfortunately he was rebuked he was uh, uh, teased he was mocked that uh, by dhritarashtra himself and also by the arrogant adamant uh, duryodhana he was tagged he was called he was labeled as dasi putra and whenever he would raise his voice against uh, the uh, false steps or the unethical steps taken by uh, actions taken by duryodhana he would uh, comment on that he would stop him saying that it whatever he is doing is not correct so he was uh, labeled as uh, disloyal to the uh, king so in parva vidura's character it gives him a very it gives the readers a very good uh, uh, picture about vidura and he it is characterized as staying with the system but fighting against it so he fights against it he just talks about many issues uh, about uh, and he doesn't like the way um, you know uh, both dhritarashtra and duryodhana are handling the pandavas so he he just there are a lot of in, inward voices of vidura that speak to the readers and uh, he says that he shouldn't have done that you know you should have uh, just gone away out of uh, hastinavati but one time it, you know he himself he, he uh, argues to himself and he says why should i go because i was born here i cultivate land here i am an administrator here and this is my land so why should i run away from this place i'm not going to run away so let me stay here and let me still be loyal to myself so uh, because of such uh, uh, thoughts he has he was frequently humiliated and oppressed by both dhritarashtra and duryodhana but still he uh, he was consulted and that's a tragic part you know uh, he was almost uh, every time he was called back by dhritarashtra and uh, he was spoken to he was consulted uh, uh, to uh, guide uh, to guide the prince and the king to rule hastinavati the next character is uh, ekalavya mm, he stands as an epitome to guru bhakti he was um, a great archer and he always will be uh, idolized and he will be uh, taken as uh, a, a metaphor for guru bhakti uh, ekalavya was the son of uh, hiranyadhanu the chief of tribe of forest dwelling hunters so he was uh, and that group was called as the bhillas also called as the nishadas uh, when ekalavya comes to a uh, age when he has to learn certain uh, skills and education uh, he uh, you know his father hiranyadhanu approaches dronacharya who was the only guru at that time uh, and then he wants his son uh, you know he wants his son to learn under this reverend guru the skills of archery because archery was very important to them uh, let us remember one thing hiranyadhanu had no reason he had no intention of making his son a very great archer he just wanted his son to learn archery to protect his tribe from the wild animals uh, but drona rejects it uh, hiranyadhanu's uh, request uh, and he says it you know he cannot take a low caste child Uh, as his disciple only for that reason he rejects that uh, but we all know that ekalavya learned you know it was uh, probably uh, ekalavya's uh, uh, learning of archery was the first of the distance kind of education you know uh, without any guru without uh, no, the online kind of teaching so the distance education he learned he understood the skills of archery he learned everything and we all know that his talent comes to limelight there is a jealous uh, arjuna who says uh, that you know the the guru has cheated him and uh, and in a flash uh, the drona guru dronacharya he uh, asks for the right thumb of ekalavya as his guru dakshina uh, what uh, actually haunts the readers here is what right does a guru have to take away uh, guru dakshina when the teacher has not taught him at all so suppose uh, i am giving a public discourse in an uh, social platform and i claim that whoever sees that you have to pay me something how fair is it how fair is it at all so that kind of uh, haunting thoughts that that kind of thoughts come to the readers mind when he has not taught him when he has rejected him as his uh, uh, disciple 
how what what right and the what rights did guru uh, dronacharya take his uh, guru dakshina it was only to show that yes he has a kind of power and uh, yeah, because he he just wanted to uh, show that he was that much of authoritative uh, that is the um, uh, the uh, epic Bharata, mahabharata style uh, in bhairapa's uh, parva uh, it is bhishma who has induced this kind of a thought into uh, uh, Dronacharya. So uh, Bhairapa holds Bhishma, Charya, uh, Bhishma as uh, responsible for Drona's action. And it was because, you know, he calls Drona and he says, see, um, I don't know whether you have taught him or not, but uh, that child has learned archery very well, which is supposed to be only for the Aryans. And uh, if these people, if these tribes become well versed in archery, they will one day attack the uh, city of Hastinavati. They come into our towns. They will take away our women. They will loot our grain. So I don't know. You have caused the damage. Whether you have taught him or it was your idol or he has learned from you, I don't know. It was you who was responsible uh, for this damage. So you have to somehow uh, you know, uh, make up this and you have to uh, take back from him whatever you have given, rightly or wrongly. Uh, this is what is Bhishma's order to Drona. And um, Drona has no other way because he has uh, he has to earn his livelihood from this kingdom and these kings. So he just, uh, in a flash, he just requests, I mean, uh, asks uh, uh, Ekalavya to give away his thumb. So this kind of exploitation of the lower caste uh, is very clearly incident, evident in this incident. The next character uh, is Ghatot Kaja. Uh, he is lost in time. At the same time, he is remembered only during the essential time. So he is lost and remembered in time. Uh, we know uh, Gatot Kacha was a demon king born to Bhima and Hidimba. Hidimba is also called as Sala Katankati. That is the uh, root name. That is the true name that uh, Hidimba carries. And um, uh, you know, after giving birth to or if being responsible for the uh, birth of this child bhima goes on in his life he just moves away from him and from uh, from hidimba uh, on the um, uh, i can say it is an order from kunti that, that they have to move on kunti did not want bhima to get stuck with one uh, woman and make family and he shouldn't be forgetting what his aim of life is their aim of life was to uh, get back their kingdom so uh, the Bhima leaves the husband, uh, I mean wife and the child and goes away. Uh, they were forgotten during the good times when the Padre Pandavas, uh, uh, they did the Rajasuya Yagna, they were coronated, they have built uh, 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 their uh, palace, they built their kingdom. All those things, they were uh, forgotten and they were remembered only during uh, the war. It was, in fact, Krishna who reminds Bhima to go to uh, Hidimba land or Hidimba Vana and then bring back his son, Gatot Gaja, who was very powerful, Rakshasa. But unfortunately, he was used as a cannon fodder for uh, to save Arjuna. Cannon fodder is a person who is, uh, you know, just in the army. He is just in the army. He is there to protect the main Atiratas or the warriors. Uh, uh, Sarathi, uh, Athirata, Maharata, um, they are the warriors of different category. These cannon fodders, they act as a shield to these, uh, uh, you know, uh, these uh, warriors. So to shield Arjuna or to uh, divert the attention of the enemies towards the other uh, small little warriors, uh, you know, cannon fodders are used. And um, Ghatot Gaja was one. So uh, it was only because Karna had a very powerful weapon called Vasvi Shakti, also called as Alayudha. Uh, he, he had preserved it only to use it against Arjuna. Krishna knew this very well. And therefore, he uh, makes Ghatot Kaja, he uh, rebukes, uh, I mean, he tempts Ghatot Kaja to go on and attack Karna. And Karna, he is totally distracted uh, and unable to control uh, Ghatot Kaja uh, and his valor. He uses, he is forced to use this Alayuda and kill, Gat, uh, kill Gatot Kaja. Uh, in the epic Mara, Mahabharata and Vyasa Mahabharata and other versions also, there is no mention of Hidimba or the wives of Gatot Kaja lamenting over death, over his death. 
But in Parva, there is a, there are pages together where the Bhairabha talks about the paternal love of Bhima towards his uh, son. Uh, he remembers those days, you know, when he has gone back to call Bihidimba uh, and call back, gone back to call Gadur Gajar for the war, and then they spend some quality time. He carries his son to uh, a, a very uh, nearby safe tent and tries to bring him back to life, uh, but because of excessive bleeding. Uh, Gatot Kaja breathes his last, last. But, and Bhima does not want to lie, uh, leave his son as, uh, um, you know, as, as an uh, orphan uh, dead body. So he uh, also finishes his last rites and rituals to it. And uh, uh, there is Draupati who consoles Bhima. And Bhima is, you know, he just unbashedly, abashedly, he just cries and cries over his uh, son and his son's death. Uh, so that is the kind of parental love that uh, Bhairapa tries to bring in here. And in this way, uh, Bhairapa's Parva is a revisionist narrative. Uh, the last character that I would be talking about is Yuyutsu. He was the paternal half-brother of uh, Duryodhana. He was born to Dhritarashtra and Sugada, uh, who was Gandhari's very close servant maid, who comes from Gandhara, in fact, from her uh, maternal home. He is known as a virtuous traitor because he is always, always Yuyutsu was a righteous person. He focused only on righteous acts. Um, but, um, you know, uh, the reason for uh, the birth of uh, Yuyutsu is that Shakuni, uh, uh, Gandhari's uh, brother, he would describe her physical beauty. Uh, Sugada's physical beauty to Dhritarashtra whenever they were in private and uh, this kind of description would arouse uh, Dhritarashtra's sexual interest in Sugada. And um, uh, we, uh, it is also a known fact that Gandhari's uh, pregnancy was a delayed one. Uh, and uh, because of this, Dhritarashtra is unable to control his sexual pleasures, his sexual uh, uh, instincts, and therefore he uh, has many... Uh, maid servants he uses many maid servants uh, during this time and all of them give birth to a son or a daughter and that that makes the 104 or 101 kauravas that we count for uh, and it is not all of them that who are born out of gandhari which is practically not possible that is what is uh, written in parva so uh, dhritarashtra's uh, uh, encounter with uh, sugada for one night that uh, is the reason for Yuyutsu's birth. And uh, the name Yuyutsu was given by Pitamaha Bhishma, uh, which means very curious to fight, very eager uh, and valorous to fight. Right from his childhood, Yuyutsu would always oppose Duryodhana and uh, even Shakuni's all plots to trouble uh, Pandavas. Uh, Duryodhana would always, you know, either poison Bhima and uh, he would uh, push him into water, he would hit him hard, he would attack him unnecessarily. So all these kinds of actions and even um, when it comes to other, uh, you know, when, when there was a peacemaking session that happened and uh, Krishna comes in, Yuyutsu was one of the advisors to Duryodhana to give away the uh, rights of the Pandavas, but it was not considered at all. Again, mm -hmm. he was rebuked as a Dasi Putra. He was told as a person of a low birth and he was marginalized. And uh, before Mahabharata war begins, uh, there is an open option by Bhishma, uh, who is fighting in favor of the Kauravas. He gives an open option to everyone, not just the soldiers. Um, excuse me. Yeah, just two minutes. I just want to finish this. Please it short on. Yes, ma'am. Uh, uh, he gives an open option to everyone that if anybody can... Uh, move to whichever side they want. So on this uh, option, uh, he takes advice of Vidura and Yuyutsu uh, drops uh, his support from the Kaurava side and joins the Pandava side. And uh, very curiously, he is one among the 11 survivors of the war. And later years, when, uh, you know, when Parikshit, uh, King, Prince Parikshit becomes the um, uh, king, uh, Yuyutsu is appointed as the regent uh, to this king. But whatever it is, there is a lot of uh, uh, marginalization happened. There is a lot of negligence happened in, uh, in the case of Yuyutsu and his marginalized. 
So we can conclude that there are several uh, stories that bring a lot of courage and strength and intelligence and all those things. Uh, of late, the recent retellings of Mahabharata from different perspectives, they have given these marginalized characters a little bit of respect and justice. So these uh, characters, uh, they are not tragic heroes, but they are the heroes of tragic incidents. Uh, that is what I would like to say. And uh, thank you for listening to me. I'm sorry for exceeding my time limit. That's it, sir. Um, uh, thank you, Ms. Uh, Ranjani. That was a very good uh, presentation. Uh, it was, you made it very uh, clear about the marginalized characters. And you told there are many uh, characters like that. And you have chosen very uh, few. And four of them you have explained very well. Um, thank so you. So one, uh, yeah, thank you. One, uh, the wisdom of the poor is uh, rejected, right? Huh. And yes. the bravery of the marginalized is uh, not approved, right? Yes. So this is what, uh, even now it is happening, it is not uh, new, it is not a wonder uh, when you see uh, in today's uh, world, but it is, as you told, it is happening, uh, right? Uh, since time immemorial, it is happening. Right, even yes. in epics, it is the same uh, uh, thing. I not know. Yes, but you you made it very uh, clear. It was an in-depth uh, study about it. Right. Thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you so okay. much. Good. Good. Any any questions, uh, participants? You can uh, you have any clarifications to be uh, right asked? You can uh, make it now. Thank you. Uh, okay okay if, if it is not uh, so uh, shall we shall we move on to the next uh, person the presenter yes sir yes yes okay okay thank you sir thank you thank, so much thank for you Anjani, ma yes yes thank you thank okay good thank you thank you all the best yes sir thank you very much okay uh, again a good evening and our next uh, presenter is rupa rani uh, research uh, scholar in a PhD in English, right? And uh, again, uh, Jain uh, University. Okay. Now, uh, uh, Ruparani uh, is going to present uh, in gender-based violence, right? On the topic. Okay. Tanya Singh's being raised. Okay. Fine. fine. Okay. Uh, is my yeah. screen visible? Yes, yes, of course, of course. Okay. Yeah, you can even present it now. Okay, thank you. Yes, very good. Uh, good evening uh, to all the distinguished people and uh, fellow presenters. I'm Rupa, Rupa Rani, research scholar from Jain University. I am presenting paper, articulation of uh, gender-based violence in uh, Reshma Qureshi and uh, Tanya Singh's being Reshma. Uh, literature represents life. Uh, it reflects the human experience and a wide range of emotions. The impact of uh, the feminist movement paved the way for women writers to boldly confront the set norms of society. The Indian women writers, including um, Anita Desai, Shashi Deshpande, Kamala Das, Arundhati Roy, and many more, they reflected the concept of women's marginality, gender inequality, and the condition of women in the society of that period much more intensely. Uh, life writings such as memoirs and uh, autobiographies recorded violence, uh, sexual abuse, gender discrimination, and atrocities inflicted, inflicted on women. The plight of uh, uh, women in modern society uh, needs to be acknowledged as the discrepancy persists still in the modern era. And she is a victim of uh, gender violence and a patriarchal decrees of society. And the problem of uh, gender-based violence, which uh, go beyond abuse and physical torture, uh, such as rapes, acid attacks, and human trafficking. Uh, the victims of gender violence and their predicaments are often neglected because there is always a strong moratorium to address the theme of violence 
especially the gender based violence exhibited in writing by men men or male there are many autobiographies or memoirs that articulated these issues and uh, these articulations articulation became uh, more significant uh, when the victims themselves addressed these vital issues in their writing so here this uh, study delves into uh, reshma kureshi and tanya singh's being reshma uh, and it uh, examine uh, violence inflicted on women in society as represented in the memoir it attempts to illustrate reshma's journey from oppression to expression so being reshma is a memoir written by uh, reshma kureshi and tanya singh which was first published on uh, 13 december 28 2018 being reshma tells the story of reshma kureshi an acid attack survivor who was born in a middle class muslim family living in mumbai with four siblings his father was a taxi driver reshma was the youngest of five kids and she was much uh, indulged by her uh, siblings and parents on 19th may 2014 at the age of 17 Uh, Reshma Kureshi was attacked uh, with uh, um, sulfuric acid. Uh, uh, the attacker was none other than uh, her brother-in-law, and uh, uh, the brother-in-law who was married to her sister named Gulshan. As Shashi Tharoor says, uh, this memoir is a is a powerful story of courage, perseverance, and triumph. The memoir uh, here articulates the plight. and uh, predicaments of ordinary women in the traditional role of wives mothers or sisters the practices imposed and uh, male domination in women's life are considered a natural phenomenon in a patriarchal society this book unfolds the violence inflicted on women on different levels the rising trend of violence against women is a burning uh, and tropical issue of every day it establishes the st subaltern status of women the world over uh, this transcultural phenomenon while being a, a cruel reality of our lives is a, a recurrent motif uh, in fiction and writing of any genre for that matter the aim of this article is to establish uh, the cognizance uh, taken by writers towards this reality um as a Uh, a professor of peace studies um, uh, points out uh, named um, the, the professor named john galchang uh, explains violence in terms of three dimensions direct structural and cultural violence direct violence is what we see and experience structural violence is built into the social structure uh, cultural violence is uh, it refers to prevailing attitudes or beliefs used to legitimize violence of direct or structural nature so here uh, direct violence is um, horrific and it its brutality often receives our attention we respond to it because the uh, criminal is criminal is visible to our eyes but structural violence is almost invisible embedded in the uh, social structure being reshma here chronicles incidents of domestic and cultural violence along with the direct violence the first victim is gulshan uh, who is reshma kureshi's sister uh, gulshan's husband is the one who throws uh, acid uh, on reshma's face when reshma along with her parents visit her uh, married sister gulshan for the first time young reshma was uh, very much excited to meet her elder sister but Reshma was surprised to see uh, the strange uh, um, uh, behavior of uh, her sister, and uh, her actions are the obvious result of the dominance of her of Gulshan's in-laws. The role of women is confined to um, uh, doing all the household chores and domestic du duties. Uh, her rights are often rejected, and roles are not acknowledged after. Uh, marriage that is clearly visible in gulshan's case in being reshma the memoir also dwells into issues of uh, uh, women, um, women after marriage such as dowry physical harassment and gender inequality after gulshan's marriage with jamaluddin gulshan was never allowed to see her parents and she was tortured to get money from her father but when gulshan refused to ask for money from her father 
her husband and his family tries to kill her and reshma explains that as um, how her clothes soaking wet hung from her raged body um, uh, she reeked of kerosene and uh, then she explains that incident how um, she was uh, nearly uh, to the verge of death reshma uh, reshma's sister gulshan represents all those victims of violence who are either starved to death by her in-laws or physically tortured uh, abused and uh, the various types of violence in inflicted on them only because of dowry the belief of indian female community uh that they they are uh, they are always weak um, and submissive and uh, it adds to their uh, emptiness and leads to the traumatic state of women or physical uh, and psychological distress as well gulshan was repeatedly uh, tormented by her in-laws and uh, gulshan expresses the anguish which was never shared with her parents she represents a docile indian girl who constantly hides her pain and suffering that never uh, lets her parents know about what she was going through until she is on the verge of death that is one example of this domestic uh, um, violence and now uh, the main victim is uh, the second character that i have selected is reshma who is acid attack survivor and a victim of violence and uh, here reshma was merely 17 when she was when she had lived through this most horrific ordeal Uh, the uh, incident took place after her sister gulshan's talaq with a jamaluddin reshma's sister and uh, her cousins were on their way traveling to the city of allahabad for an alim exam alim refers to uh, teaching of islamic sciences uh, she was attacked with sulfuric acid by her uh, um, uh, brother in law jamaluddin and uh, two other um, attackers the attack uh, was uh, aimed at her sister gulshan but reshma became the victim on 19th may 2014 at the age of 17 she was attacked with acid and uh, uh, they caught reshma and other two uh, attackers pinned down her hands down she was helpless no one stopped them from this brutality they threw acid on her face and body according to uh, reshma her attack uh, her attack uh, the, uh, happened faster than lightning the effects of violence are devastating to women's mental and physical health she says she explains that she felt the burning of flesh and acid started to eat uh, through the layers of her skin and before uh, long it aimed for her bones and violence against women is a technical term that refers to violent acts which are primarily or exclusively committed against women such a type of violence targets a specific group with the victim's gender as a primary motive uh, it is partly a result of gender relations that presume uh, men are always superior to women uh, the subordinate status given to women leads to social sanction for men to exhibit physical aggression reshma's endless effort to escape the attack fails and she was grabbed by her brother in law's cousins and uh, they pulled her over her head so there were um, there was no way uh, for reshma to um, escape in reshma's case too he, uh, the victim was a young girl but not her male cousins the acid attack was so intensely painful for reshma that she begged her sister gulshan to kill her to at least end the pain there were people motionless merely watching everything like Uh, the way stray animals are ignored uh, and the women and the women are being uh, progressive and she is strong enough to disagree with uh, anything which she thinks is not good for her and this denial or rejection is always taken as the aggression of modern women but some men develop a maniac attitude uh, to take revenge and it is just to satisfy their ego Uh, the harsh reality of society and system is exposed in this memoir which is archaic bureaucratic and painful toward victims of gender violence the memoir also voices the plight of marginalized victims of gender violence and inequalities demonstrating the vulnerable legal system of society which has made men dare to commit more uh, any heinous uh, crimes uh, against women there is a powerful urge for the uh, need for women to encounter the system 
there is a need for a definite strategy and a new approach to change the future course of Indian uh, womanhood. So here I conclude. Uh, being Reshma is not only uh, a memoir which inspires people by giving a new voice for a new identity uh, and a new credo of individualism, but it also tries to convey boldly the underlying beliefs and ideologies that are responsible for the marginalization and subjugation of women. It has undoubtedly uh, captured the complexities underlying women's ex experiences of uh, multi-dimensional violence with reference to their ethnicity and class. The memoir also articulates gender violence and displays the audacity of a young woman who is embroiled in passion to make the best out of the worst of human nature. Uh, the uh, story of her survival from, survival from an acid attack and the determination to turn tragedy into a powerful movement uh, for uh, changes too is uh, uh, truly inspiring for all those victims of gender and domestic violence to overcome um, challenging odds in their lives. With this, I end my presentation. Uh, thank you, everyone, uh, for uh, giving an opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Ms. Rubrani. That was a very great uh, presentation, and uh, so you did it well. Uh, the... Thank you, sir. Yes. Um, so, what is, uh, uh, may I ask? Uh, what is what what would be your recommendations or uh, so what do you think uh, how can women uh, fight against this type of uh, domestic violence and uh, right so so sure. what are the ways women uh, can come out of uh, uh, these things first thing is to articulation the articulation voicing any kind of violence without uh, you know uh, being reluctant first thing articulated and then uh, there is a need uh, to um, uh, for our criminal justice system to come up with uh, reforms to prevent these kind of crimes the uh, people are not scared uh, the criminals are not scared because of the punishment the punishment is the criminal justice system um, needs to come up with uh, you know uh, very painful um, punishments for them so we need to create more awareness for the young generation um, and community norm uh, change um, is uh, very much important. And there is always the um, need for um, modifying the physical or social environment uh, in the society, sir. I think uh, uh, this would minimize the violence. Um, it may not completely eradicate, but uh, I feel they may minimize uh, the percentage of violence in, inflicted on them. So uh, my own, uh, right, some few suggestions. Uh, mm -hmm. So uh, both of them, uh, right, to be couple. So both of them uh, should be, uh, uh, should sit for counseling, premarital uh, uh, counseling and they can attend few classes regarding the marriage and uh, after yeah, the that, marriage, I, I, that yeah. is what i mean the awareness creating awareness yeah yeah, yeah. so that would be uh, uh it is not for uh, right, one particular uh, community or society it is for all communities and uh, societies uh, in india and also uh, abroad at large uh, so that we can uh, avoid these divorces also and a lot of problems uh, in the marital life yes yes, yes. yes. thank Thanks. you thank you, uh, thank Rupa, you Rupa Rani and that was a very right so a lot of insights are there and uh, right so many uh, right uh, women's rights the uh, societies are there and they are uh, social activists are there they're working on that so we'll see so a lot of lot of lot a lot of lot of 
uh, novels are uh, talking about these uh, right areas and uh, right themes okay so we hope uh, for the best thing that will come out right yes thank yes. you thank you thank you so much thank, thank you, you. Yeah, yeah 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 thank you okay then the next uh, presenter um yes it's the presenter swati shri yes so is a phd scholar uh, yeah full time and uh, EGS Pillai Arts and Science College, Nagapatinam. So, crisis of individuality in the novels of Sashides Pandey. Yeah. Uh, good evening, evening sir. Uh, Shri. Yes, yes. Good evening, sir. Nice to have you, and you can present uh, now. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, sir. Good evening, one and all. My title is Crisis of Individuality in the Novels of Sashides Pandey. Many Indian women novelists have explored the identity crisis in Indian English literature in order to establish an identity that is not imposed by the patriarchal society. The theme of growing up from childhood to womanhood and gaining identity or at least uh, um, an effort in this regard has been consistent, consistently seen these years. Shashi Teshpande is an award-winning Indian novelist. In her novels, as a matter of fact, Focus the social world of complex relationship, both maternal and paternal. She is basically known as a feminist writer who writes about women belonging to the Indian middle class. Her uh, feminine characters were brought up in a traditional environment and struggle to liberate themselves to seek self identity and, uh, of course, struggle to acquire their independence. Uh, Deshpande in her novel seek to expose the tradition by which a woman is trying to play her subservient role in a family. Her novels reveal the man-made patriarchal tradition and uneasiness of a modern Indian woman in being a part of them. Her uh, female protagonist uh, rebel against the traditional way of life and patriarchal values. She has presented the modern Indian woman struggle to find and consolidate her place and identity in the society that stands conflicted on cusp of the uh, tradition and modernity. She portrays how this social conflict has caused women of today to feel torn between contrasting demands and requirements of tradition on the one hand and the aspiration, freedom, equality of the modern world on the other. Almost all her protagonists, such as Indu from the Roots and Shadows and uh, Sarita from the Dark Holes No Terror, Ormi from the Binding Wine, Jaya of That Long Silence, all are struggled to find and preserve their respective identity as a wife as well as a mother. These novels present the story of a man-woman relationship from the woman's point of view of wife and husband, from the wife's point of view and the daughter and the mother relationship, both point of view. She illustrated how the patriarchal oppression and the gender differentiation of the family and the male-centered Indian society affects the man-woman relationship. That long silence gains authenticity <coughs> from the fact that Jaya, the heroine, is a well well-educated woman, blessed with literary sensibility toward the nurtured in the silence, which corresponds with her fictional role. Jaya is a modern, convent educator, fluent English-speaking woman and a creative writer who symbolizes the emerging new woman conscious of her status in the society. After 17 years of troubled life in silence, Jaya pens her story revealing her feelings, incidents of ups and downs that caused her despair and disappointment and endangered her life. Jaya's husband Mohan was that sort of a man and uh, he married her for her social betterment. Jaya had lost her father at the age of 15 and her brother considered her burden and this led her ma to marry Mohan. Before her marriage, Jaya had been taught the importance of the husband in the life of the woman. Vanita tells her that her husband is a sheltering tree. When Jaya is leaving her home after her marriage, Dada had advised her to be a good to Mohan. Jaya brought Jaya brother brought Mohan with money and gave him to Jaya and she tried to put him. This was the beginning of Jaya's lifeless kind of married life. The entire novel brings out the stale married life in a middle class home, and uh, Desh Pandey tells the story from the point of view of a wife. The women in Mohan's family were so definite about their roles and duties, but Jaya has no clear cut idea about her role in the family. Her life before the marriage and after the marriage shared a little uh, similarity. Her father gave her the name Jaya for victory, but her in-laws gave her a name Suhasini 
pointed to be dockled was efficient wife concerned only about the tastes and interest of mohan jaya has lost her authenticity as a human being she has shaped herself to the wishes of mohan mohan kept her away all her likings she was forced by mohan to given up the job she wanted to take the baby she wanted to adopt and the anti price campaign she had wanted to take part jaya's journey through the rough road of her natural life she learns at last the thing is that no questions no retorts only silence in the another novel the dark holes no terror the protagonist sarita is treated in an unfair by her mother as she regards her responsible for the death of her only son tuwa he has bad memories of her childhood as she was second to her brother saro shares her same plight mattered out almost all the indian or any other girl in the patriarchal society she remembers that it was only once a year at the time of puja that she was more important to thrua otherwise although being younger than her it was he who was always in all circumstances and situation was being preferred to than to her there was always a puja on his body but not on not on her even after the death of druva her body was not celebrated and after this death there were no celeb no other celebration in the household every year her body passed away silently both at the home and the school the lack of identity is vividly established indirectly by shashi deshpande in the novel in the another novel the binding wine is a very significant novel as there are many questions raised by the novelist relating to feminine world which she herself has answered in her own way in this novel she described the problems of urmila the protagonist and the other characters in the novel the novelist has raised a sensitive issue of rape where is the victim who is always held guilty kalpana was in a state of unconscious when admitted to the hospital and it was assumed that she was might be injured in a car accident but after uh, examining her the doctors informed that she has been raped which was very shocking for her mother who almost fainted after hearing this she tells one another doctors hysterically it is not true you people are trying to blacken my daughter's name this is quite predictable for her mother to react in the way as being a victim of rape it will be her daughter who held who be held guilty and uh, will suffer throughout her life she tells them to keep keep it as a secret and request not to call the police urmi tries to handle the situation by keeping it as a secret and giving all the possible help to comfort kalpana's mother caught in a trauma of her own life she tries all her effort to give them relief she even accompanies the victim's mother to her house urmi visits regularly to inquire about kalpana and shakuntha's try to tell her about uh, her daughter's life the novelist tries to give her point uh, that the man who raped her had no bother of raping a girl but a girl who have been raped has a guilt all through the life or the problem of gender bias and the identity crisis is arising here focusing on all the marital relationship uh, she seeks to expose the tradition by which a woman is tried, trained to play her subservient role in the family all her novels reveal the man made patriarchal traditions and the uneasiness of the modern indian woman in being a part of them the point of view of the present social reality as is experienced by the women to the present world of mothers daughters and wives is also to present indirectly the fathers sons and husbands the relation between the men and women and uh, between the women themselves her young heroines rebel against the traditional way of life and the patriarchal values women in the patriarchal society made to be feel marginalized her novels contain the seed of a definite quest for a true authentic self by making her heroines undergo stages of self introspection and self reflection she makes them evolve themselves into more liberated individuals that what their gender of culture have sanctioned the self quest of uh, these women is triggered off by some crisis in their lives these women strive heroically and uh, overcome their um, cultural conditioning and the barriers created by the society in the matters of tradition and manners they finally emerge as free autonomous individuals no longer content to be led but desirous of taking a lead rather than falling into the western uh, feminist lord these strengthened indian women work out their own individual paths towards the liberation and in the process uh, they discover new faces to themselves which has had been latent in them 
in this discovery of self and consequent self fulfillment these women have paved their way for the better understanding of themselves as well as the others in shorting the course of uh, such unconventional women uh, rash pandey seems to make an obvious clear that uh, traditional society must be remold itself in order to accept these emerging new women for the self identity thank you yeah thank you swati shri that was a, a good presentation and uh, the topic uh, yes so sachdesh pandey not only sachdesh pandey and uh, so lot many others starting from lamps in the whirlpool right your rajam krishnan's uh, right novel the tamil uh, translation translated by english so many many novels are they talking about uh, right, gender bias and uh, i right identify identifying the self so normally uh, mostly 99% you can say it is of uh, women so they are lost in the uh, crowd so right so you know uh, know what is the role they are seeking their identity yeah 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 um as a mother sometimes as a uh, uh, right uh, a wife and uh, right so housewife right so they yes, sir. yes so the lot of in all the character in the all the character roles in the family women are uh, uh, seeking their identity as a mother as a wife in yeah. uh, in uh, all the character roles at last she loses her own identity identity as a, a woman an individual right yes sir so individual is not respected but the roles and responsibilities are respected and accepted but as yes, a sir, uh, yeah my point is is that uh, not about the respect women are uh, highly respected in a society mm-hmm. but the uh, self identity is uh, is a question mark there they are, the identity is uh, women are losting their identity in the family mm, so yeah, that is yeah. uh, it is not as uh, a respect it's an identity their individuality yeah yeah her role, her role is accepted Yes, so sir. she has to do, yeah she has to do lot of roles but uh, she herself the individuality is not uh, accepted that is what yes sir yes sir mm-hmm. yeah so many uh, right so they come out of sometimes it, it it is an adverse effect also so it gives adverse effect also in the family and also in the society and many uh, right so sometime it leads to uh, broken uh, families also right so how she comes out of that uh, right uh, you are a protagonist and uh, what is that uh, she is doing to come out of the traditional way of uh, living it is the it is a highly contrast to the tradition of the modernity uh, nowadays uh, in the modern society women are given uh, equal rights and women are um, are uh, permitted to go for work and uh, their identity their uh, goals uh, or uh, they are pursuing their goals and uh, in those days the tradition according to the tradition uh, it was uh, not given to the women okay thank you ma'am sir okay. thank you thank you so much ma'am thank you okay sir you want to say anything regarding this yeah as, as you said uh, equal rights have been uh, given and uh, uh, right so you can uh, see that uh, even now right so in four of uh, this part in this session so only one uh, male has uh, presented and uh, you see three women right so you are uh, presenting right is a good that is also a good uh, sign of it more number of uh, women participants are uh, here right uh, good so so it is also there so in some part it is again uh, right so going down so good good so that was a good presentation uh, swati shri yes yes thank you thank you thank you so much sir now sir, yes sir now we have come to an end of the session
So thank you so much, sir, for spending your valuable time. And also I thank all the presenters. Thank you, ma'am. So thank you for the opportunity given and uh, right the vibrant team of uh, the college, uh, especially HOD ma'am and the management. I thank each and every one of you for uh, giving me this opportunity to share the uh, session. And, and, and I learned a lot from the uh, presenters. So I got no, now new insights. And also I learned many things from the right presentation. So thank you for the opportunity, ma'am. And I wish all uh, success for the research scholars to present and contribute uh, to the literature uh, at large. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your uh, so much for your wonderful uh, information and uh, presentation. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Hmm. Now we'll move. We shall move on to the end of the session. In this uh, first day final session, our uh, chairperson is readily waiting uh, to chair the session. I welcome Dr. Suma Alia John, uh, Assistant Professor and Head. Welcome you, ma'am. Ma'am, you have to unmute. Thank you. No. Thank yes, you, ma'am. Uh, dear presenters, now we'll have a small intro about our chairperson. Good evening, everyone. I would like to introduce Dr. Suma Alia John, ma'am, Associate Professor and Head, PG and Research Department of English, Tripur Kumaran College of Arts and Science. Being a research supervisor, she has produced 15 MPhil and three PhD scholars. She has 27 years of experience in teaching. She is a UG chairperson of English for Bharatiya University's affiliated colleges. She has been the member of Board of Studies in Bharatiya University. She has published various books, articles, and journals. She has attended numerous seminars, conferences, and workshops. Ma'am, now I request you to move the session along. Good evening to one and all. Is it audible? Yes, ma'am, you are audible. Yes. Good evening. On uh, behalf, of, behalf of this international virtual conference, I exchange my uh, sincere thanks for having given me an opportunity as an uh, resource person and also to be a chairperson for this uh, occasion. And uh, I, uh, first of all, uh, I'm very happy to be on this virtual conference. And uh, the topic given on this also is very interesting for this technical session. And uh, also, I'm so happy to welcome all the dignitaries on the virtual pl platform this on this occasion and this evening. Thank you. <laughs> 